Okay, so in the last video, we defined some important terms like drawdown, cone of depression, uh, static water level, pumping water level, and radius of influence. And if you haven't seen that video, you should go watch that first before we get into this. But now I want to look at this cone of depression a little more, and we're going to kind of figure out why it takes on a certain shape and how far out it reaches within the aquifer. But before I do that, I want to make an important point about this cone of depression. What we have in this cone of depression is a hydraulic head differential, right? We have a higher elevation of water here and a lower elevation of water here. And we've created that head differential by pumping water from the aquifer. And what do we know about head differentials like this? We know that water flows from higher elevation to lower elevation. And if you want to watch more about hydraulic head and groundwater um, and how we measure it, I, I'll put those videos in the comment section. Uh, they're pretty helpful. But if you haven't watched those, just know that water flows from higher elevation to lower elevation. Okay, so now I want you to imagine Okay, so now I want you to imagine. Fuck. All right, so now I want you to imagine that this aquifer is sort of like a big bathtub, okay? And uh, it's got these, you know, it's a bathtub, so it's got these barriers on the edge of it. And there's nothing coming into this bathtub. It's just completely sealed off from the outside. There's no water coming in, and there's no water going out except through the well to the surface when we pump. You can probably imagine what's going to happen to this cone of depression when we continue pumping. It's going to get bigger, right? It's going to look like this, right? Because we're going to pump all the water out of this bathtub. And so this cone of depression is going to widen. And eventually it'll drop all the way down um, to the point where, say, our pump is right there. It'll drop below that pump and we won't be able to pump anything out. Now imagine we this is not a bathtub and it's open to the rest of the world. And water can enter, let me change colors, I don't like that color. And water can enter the aquifer uh, from beyond our little system that we've drawn, okay? Well, eventually this cone of depression will stabilize at some point and it'll, it'll reach sort of like a, a stable level, a stable shape and a stable radius. Remember the radius of influence is the radius of the cone of depression. And let's make this or cone of depression. Okay, so it's going to stabilize at some point if water can enter this aquifer from beyond. So that's one of the factors that will determine how far out this cone of, cone of depression will reach. Okay, and so let's call that recharge. Okay, let's call that recharge of water to our aquifer here. Okay, it's the recharge will be the the availability or the uh, the resupply of water to our system here. So another thing that'll affect the shape and length of this cone of depression is our pumping rate. Let me write that down too. And so you can probably imagine that if we pump this aquifer as fast as we can and as much water out of this aquifer as we can do, we're going to drain it if the recharge is less than the pumping rate. Okay. So if, if we're pumping out more water than is coming into the aquifer, we're going to create a larger cone of depression because we're going to drain our system even more. And so therefore, our cone of depression will get wider. Okay. Now, let's imagine scenario two where the recharge is greater than our pumping rate. Well, that means our cone of depression will stabilize. And that means we can pump more out of the system without completely dewatering it. Okay. We're not going to take everything out. Oops. And so another concept that we need to talk about is what we call transmissivity. And I haven't covered this yet in any of my videos, but I will get to this. Trans... Yeah, two S's. So transmissivity is related, is a property related to the aquifer, okay? It, it's, it's a measure of how well water can flow through the aquifer. So imagine a, a material that can transmit water very well. It's very permeable. It has a high transmissivity. It can transmit water easily. And then imagine like a dense material, a dense aquifer that's not permeable. It doesn't transmit water as easily. Water is going to struggle. It's going to move slowly through that, that material, through that dense, non-permeable aquifer. And so it will have a low transmissivity. So transmissivity is another important point. If you have a very low transmissivity, 
water is going to struggle through this aquifer and you're going to create a larger cone of depression. If you have a very high transmissivity, water can move nice and quickly through the aquifer and you're not going to create as big a cone of depression, okay? And so one last point I want to get into is how do we know, how can we define this cone of depression? How can we measure how far out it goes, what kind of shape it's taking? Well, the answer is simple. What if we had a well out here that could measure the water level while we pump? And so we measure it to be right there. And let's say we had another well. I'm just going to draw this really quickly, ad hoc style. Measure, imagine another well right there. We can measure the water level there. Imagine we had one here, and we measured it right there. So from these measurements in these monitoring wells, so if we call this, this guy the pumping well, and these guys the monitoring wells, because they monitor rather than pump, from these measurements, we can figure out how far out the cone of depression is forming and what kind of shape it's going to take, okay? And eventually we'll get into aquifer testing, which lets us know, which is basically a test to figure out how much we can pump from the aquifer, how far out this cone of depression is going to form. Um, pump Aquifer tests are very important. I'll cover that in a later video. Um, but for now, I think we'll leave it at that. Uh, if you found this helpful, go ahead and like the, the video, subscribe to the channel, check out the other videos. There's a lot of good information in there. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.